my name is Eddie Topic. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here is your weekly technical analysis of Paris Rapeseed, Winnipeg Canola and Malaysian Palm Oil. Paris Rapeseed. Between mid-June to October 2023, the market had been trapped between two congestion bands. One below 438 to 445 and three quarters, another above between 513 and three quarters and 519 and a half. During this incarceration, the market constructed a head and shoulders top pattern with an extension to its second shoulder from mid August until the start of October. The problem the market suffered trying to test down to the neckline of its pattern had been the sheer amount of force necessary to push clear down through this head and shoulders top neckline and try and fulfill the targets below. Now, what I mean by this is that we not only had the neckline to try and push down through, but nearby we had the previously mentioned congestion band between 438 to 445 and three quarters, containing the March, April and June 2013 highs at 442 and a quarter, 442 and 438 respectively. It looked as if prices had finally managed to break lower in early October, but the market turned back up and back into the congestion, then fell away again, rolled up and fell away creating a small reverse head and shoulders pattern in October and November last year, before again sitting on top of the 438 to 445 and three quarter congestion band. Yet again. This for a while not only moved the market away from a break lower, but also into a possible false break lower uh, territory. However, this, whilst this all happened, there were, are, some key bearish pressures that prices had to start dealing with and ones which I detailed 12 weeks ago, which I repeat now, and I quote, we have overhead a more diaphanous congestion band between 456 and three quarters to 468 and three quarters. A band that was relatively easier to navigate than the others mentioned, but which now has three key potential bearish pressures within it. They are declining short medium moving average, that's currently 433 and three quarters. Then the medium moving average, that's currently 439 even and the declining long moving average, and that's currently 446 and three quarters. At least two out of these three are descending to impact the market, and one should not take any away anything from them, especially any efforts to pressure the market from above, end of quote. The short medium moving average ended up being the key bearish pressure. It had been impacting the market since early November 2023, and the build up of pressure, bearish pressure, and erosion of the bullish incentive eventually saw an initial break below the 438 to 445 and three quarter congestion band in late December last year and a proper break low at the start of January this year. Now, the move low was not without incident as the old lows from October 2023 caused prices to revert back up in mid-January up to the overhead congestion area. However, once up there, the market made a horn top in late January and we've continued now making new lows and low closes not seen since early June 2023. This now brings into focus some potential patterns I laid out some 14 weeks ago, plus some cautionary potential support below. Thus, and I quote, for the head and shoulders top pattern, hence a primary target X would be in the 400 zone with a secondary hard to reach target X1 in the 354 zone. Any move lower towards these would be very, in very interesting as we have an alternate neckline one currently at 402 and a quarter and all and alternate neckline two, currently 406 even, both in the way, and both originating back from the old November 2019, February 2020 head and shoulders top. They are highlighted in bright red and green, respectively. Additionally, there is also the December 2020 low at 396 and three quarters, which is also in the way on any move lower. I would further note that these three supports stopped the fall of this market back in May this year, and I say by May this year, I mean, and that's the end of the quote, but by May this year, I actually mean May 2023. Now, one final point, and that is I have drawn a small bearish end of November 2023 to mid January 2024 uh, bearish Andrews pitchfork to help show the bearish angle of attack. The market is currently around the declining middle time, and that's currently at 411 and a quarter. Winnipeg Canola. Last year, the key patterns here had been the July to late September lopsided double top, which we have seen reach down to both primary and secondary targets. Then below that, 
is the neckline. Specifically the neckline of the earlier mid-April to early July reverse head and shoulders bottom. Currently a 675.10. After this is what I consider to be one of the most more important patterns here. The broken bearish Andrews Pitchfork created by the earlier double top from the mid-July to late August move. The market broke up and out of the bearish Andrews Pitchfork but failed to push up through the then nearby short medium moving average currently at 649.60 which was a significant failure. Finally there was the combination of the October to November reverse head and shoulders continuation pattern from last year that was also an ascending triangle which admittedly was not the best looking version of this pattern but it nevertheless still worked. It utilized the neckline the reverse head and shoulders continuation pattern which is currently at 7.30 and a half as the flat top side trend line and the late October uptrend as the lower rising trend line. The failure at the testing of the short medium moving average throughout November led to the drop down and out of the ascending triangle. Prices moved down through the neckline of the mid April to early July reverse head and shoulders bottom and along and sometimes below the broken upper tine of the broken bearish Andrews pitchfork, finally separating away in mid January. Now seven weeks ago I said the following and I quote, my concern with this move lower was this could be seen as a precursor for a move down in the other oil seeds and vegetable oils. My thinking was that such a move could be seen as the market seemingly choosing to try and form a bearish half hesitation over November with potential all the way down to even the 580 zone. This is not a done deal and I've not placed any targets below but it's worth considering in the coming days and weeks. In the meantime let's take a look at the break below the descending triangle and see what and where this leads. Thus a primary target was in the 676 zone with a secondary hard to reach target in the 642 zone. In less than a week after the break lower the market had reached the primary target and has not been too far away from the secondary target which is at 642. It's time now to see if the market makes this secondary target a reality. End of quote. In early January the market achieved the target below. It now leaves us with the potential, potential below for the late August 2023 to date bearish halfway hesitation action down in the 580 zone which I have designated as target X1. Finally, I would like to highlight the obvious in dark blue on my daily chart. I've drawn a bearish shift pitchfork for the late August to mid-November 2023 action to show the bearish angle of attack of the market. Prices are currently just above the middle time, currently at 588.10. As a postscript, I would add the following, which I said some seven weeks ago and is turning out mm, to possibly be true. And I quote, I would add this final thought. I am increasingly becoming interested in knowing if this contract is really an indicator, a leader, if you will, of what the other oil seeds and vegetable oils may have to deal with." End of quote. To this I add, now, this also means on any recovery and move back up and not only down. Bursa Malaysia crude palm oil. I have said this so, so many times and I will keep saying it until it is no longer true or valid. But the mid-August to early November 2022, that's right, August to November 2022, well over a year ago, mildly bearish shift pitchfork, the one highlighted in dark blue on my daily chart, the market butting up against the upper time this week, currently at 39.65, is still running the show here after so, so much time. This mildly bearish pitchfork guided prices more or less lower initially in between the upper tine and the middle tine currently at uh, 3333 then for a while in May and June between the middle tine and the lower tine currently at uh, 2700 before prices move back up again testing now as I said the upper tine. The significant patterns within this bearish pitchfork have been the June to September 2023 diamond pattern and the late July to late August 2023 bearish shift pitchfork. In mid-November last year, prices broke up through the upper time, as well as over the flatlining short medium moving average, currently at 37.94, and the 50% Fibonacci line of the June to July 2023 move at 37.06.
The rise continued over the medium moving average, currently 37.56, and the flatlining long moving average, currently at 37.48, breaking the cap scene here back in mid October 2023. Then up over the purple neckline, currently 39.60 of the September to November 2023 reverse head and shoulders pattern, before failing to exploit that move higher up any further and finally running out of steam at the February 2011 high at 39.53 and the further congestion seen overhead at 39.86. And that was in mid-November last year. The market made a lopsided horn top there and dropped down through all these resistances that had become supports and are now back as resistances. The drop was enough that the market reached down, breaching but not breaking, the bright red uptrend currently at 37.12, dating from the late May 2023 move. The market had made two attempts at trying to break this uptrend and also the interesting recent 61.8% Fibonacci line at 35.92 of the late May to late July 2023 move but failed in both attempts and instead caused a small early December 2023 to mid January this year double bottom to be formed reaching up to its topside targets soon after construction in late January. This move up also tackled on the top side the purple neckline and the dark blue upper tine, managing to make two consecutive closes over the upper tine two weeks ago, but at the time failing to exploit the move, eroded once again by the overhead resistances. And prices have dropped down once again towards the bright red uptrend, though stopping short of reaching it last week as they approached the combination beforehand of the medium and long moving averages. So what now? Well, last week I said this market, unlike the other oils and vegetable oils I looked at at the time, was not wholly concerned with going lower. The bright red trend line, whilst it had been breached, was repaired and intact now and seemed, along with the medium and long moving averages, to be supportive. We also had the recent double bottom pattern, a bullish pattern, though I added the caveat that one could argue it was within a larger possible big M pattern, uh, stretching from early October 2023 to counter uh, to, to all the way up to date. To counter these points, the reverse head and shoulders pattern over autumn, especially the purple neckline, was and is acting as a sort of cap on this market, much as a head and shoulders continuation pat continue pattern would be, except it, if it was going high, it is going higher each time. I further added, and I quote, overall, I would suggest watching what the market does at either the blue upper tine or the red uptrend and the lesser Fibonacci line at 35.92, which is way below anyway, 35.92 to gauge any clues as to what may be next. I suspect with the uptrend and upper tie converging, it may not be that long, end of quote. It indeed has not been that long as we are now once again testing the purple neckline and the upper tie again. Now, there could be an argument put forward that the action as far back as early September last year is a possible, if broken, repaired bull channel, with the breached and repaired red uptrend as the lower bull channel line and the broken repaired purple neckline as the upper bull channel line. Now, I can see the attraction of such an idea, but I don't go with it, which is why I've drawn a potential upper bull channel line for the action since November 2023, highlighted in green on my daily chart, and that's currently at 40.57. To verify this, the market would have to break, properly break, the purple neckline and bearish uptrend that have capped this market, which is what we seem to be seeing an attempt at right now. I'd only add that this, this is a daily chart, is getting, this daily chart is getting colour, too colourful for my liking, but it's a necessary coloration, I apologise for that, because it's necessary to show the key features here. Thank you for listening. This weekly broadcast gives the essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted both at the front and at the back of this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Tofpik and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final important bit.